Good afternoon. I am not an electrical engineer or a software designer or a hardware guy. When I walk into a room that's dark and I press a button and light comes on, it's still miraculous to me. So when we do a piece about semiconductors, for example, I'm admitting already that I'm certainly less intelligent than the people doing the science and the people who even wrote the article. And I'm also dumber than almost anyone who had this video recommended to them just now by the YouTube algorithm, because today we're talking about open source architecture on Qualcomm chips. And a lot of the viewers here knew and understand this technology very well. Now that I've admitted that to you, you don't need to write me emails telling me what I've just told you. There is a video comment section below and you can have a go at me on there, include all the things I missed and got wrong, context I should have added but didn't have time for. But when you send me an email, that means I get another notification on my phone. It's my business email. I have to stop whatever I'm doing or wake up usually and read it. So please don't send me the emails. Now we've reported before that the semiconductor sanctions that have been placed on the companies doing business with China, that these sanctions are not working nearly as well as policymakers hoped. Uh, in the beginning, it did pose a big problem for high-tech industries here in China, but they have caught up very quickly. They are mass-producing chips in sizes that we believed would simply not be possible within this decade, and perhaps never even at all. But they did a seven nanometer chip last summer, and two months ago announced that they had built a five. And this was, we can say it again, supposed to be impossible under these sanctions. There have been a lot of interesting developments in this segment, in this industry, and it involved a question that we were struggling with for a few months. Huawei is probably the single largest single consumer of high-speed chips here in China. At least it's the most famous one. But there are lots of Chinese chip-making companies, and they can't all be building for Huawei, because as big as Huawei is, it's simply not enough demand there to go around. So we looked around, hoping to figure some things out. And we're going to look now into a terrific piece by Reuters from 5 February. And they dig into another way that Chinese companies are working around the trade restrictions and barriers. Now, U.S. sanctions were put on almost everything in 5G. That's fifth generation space. But everything that is 4G or below, that was left alone. And we'll begin with a piece from the bottom of the article from Reuters because it started in 2019 and things make a little more sense then. RISC-5, this is pronounced RISC-5. RISC-5 is an open source system that software and hardware developers from around the world can use to develop applications. The technology isn't owned by anybody or by any one company. Some of the chip sanctions were targeted at companies like Intel and others, uh, which charges a licensing fee to use their chips. Here the article references x86 and ARM. x86 is Intel and related companies, for example. And when buyers use these chips to put into other products, they need to pay the chip maker licensing fees. And there is a long contract which tells them how their developers are to use the chips. But the RISC-V architecture does away with all of that. It's shared. And one of the top makers of chips that allow for RISC-V is Qualcomm. Qualcomm is one of the companies that was supposed to be badly hurt by the sanctions that were put on China. It was believed at the time, anyway, because they sold so many chips in China. But they still are because they're 4G. And now, because China is looking at RISC-V to do more and more applications, ironically, Qualcomm is doing better than ever. Here is a chart for Qualcomm, basically straight up, and this wasn't supposed to happen. Back to this then. In 2019, the Chinese researchers met and agreed 
that if China wanted to move past x86 and arm, risk 5 was something they needed to consider very strongly. Since then, Chinese users are doing more and more on the risk 5 platforms. This includes the Chinese military, their air force and missile systems, radar systems. The article points out that about 2% of chips shipped in 2022 had a risk 5 but that was two years ago. And don't forget what the Chinese companies have done in 2023 and 24, just with seven and five nanometer designs. So back to the top of the article again, and there's a military institute in Beijing that got a patent for a new high performance chip, which reduces errors in chips used for cloud computing and, and smart cars. Reuters looked at over 100 articles and patents from here in China and they found at least $50 million in projects in the past few years. And it could be that Reuters isn't seeing a lot of the funding that's going to the sensitive projects, such as the military applications. We just don't know. But they've learned that the RISC-V chips are being used in AI and in data storage. And just a reminder that all these sanctions that we put on were intended to prevent Chinese from using fast chips to develop AI and more data centers and better applications for their military use. So we can already see how well all that is going, which means not very. Here is the section on ARM and x86. They are proprietary, which means that the architectures are owned by the companies that make the chips and you need to pay for the right to use them. The instructions and limitations to their use are very complicated. Risk v is free, simpler to use, and this leads to better efficiency in the program. Users can adapt as they see fit. And here we see what all these chip makers in China have been doing. They weren't building for Huawei or Tencent or Alibaba. These are huge companies, but still there's not enough demand there to account for all their activities. They were building instead for risk five users around the world. So half of more than 10 billion, that's at least 5 billion chips right there uh, in 2022 are made in China. Further, the risk five development industry is more mature here in China than anywhere else. In 2018, China published 10 patents for risk five. Last year, there were over a thousand. Now there are more risk five patents coming out of China than from developers in the US. Uh, Alibaba and Huawei also produced a lot of these patents. They're ranked number four and five. Back to Qualcomm again. Qualcomm is no doubt in a fight for their lives against these other Chinese chip makers now but they are pointedly designing chips that can be used for applications in China and everywhere else too. And their wager on risk five was probably in the beginning, a tactic to make them more attractive against Micron or Intel or Nvidia, but it also makes them attractive here in China and against chips outside China. It's very likely that there will be many users around the world who want to use applications and software written in China, but will not be allowed to buy a Chinese chip to do it. Entirely conceivable. So I'll share the articles now on the following screens. Thank you for what, don't forget about the emails thing. Thanks for watching, be good.